Welcome to Simplified Tipply Studies. I hope you are doing great. In this video, I will be discussing flow measurements. First of all, let us understand what is the purpose of flow measurements. The flow of material that is mainly depending on the type of flow, then volume, pressure, temperature, etc. And uh, the flow measurements are majorly depending on accuracy and uh, control requirement. Let us come to the point why flow measurements are required, especially in petroleum industries, chemical industries, then medical field. We cannot able to directly touch and identify what about the movement of flow, fluid, how about the fluid speed or volume. We cannot able to judge directly. We cannot able to uh, interfere directly. Sub sometimes some chemicals that might be flowing through a pipe, conduit. It is highly impossible to open that particular conduit and uh, do the measurement. For that purpose, we require some certain techniques. Okay, for that purpose, we need uh, fluid flow measurement. What is fluid? Fluid is actually, uh, basically we can classify liquid and uh, gaseous materials are generally called fluids. Okay, the major applications in uh, chemical industries, petroleum industries, uh, then hydroelectric power plants, in likewise, there are various industrial applications. There are two types of flow, the laminar flow and turbulent flow. In case of laminar flow, the velocity of particle is maximum at the center and uh, velocity of particle is very less at the conduit or wall type. If I talk about turbulent flow, the particle motion become more random and complex. So, these are the two types of flow. When it comes to the pictorial representation, the movement of honey, that is one of the example of laminar flow. If I compare the movement of honey, the center portion, the velocity is highest and the conduit portion, velocity is lowest. If I talk about the movement of water, it is actually called a turbulent flow. So, these are the two type of flow. You can able to explain uh, the movement of fluid. I, either it is turbulent flow or laminar flow by checking one parameter called Reynolds number. You can calculate the Reynolds number by using the symbol formula by rho Vd by mu where rho is the density of the fluid in kilogram per meter cube, E is the velocity of uh, fluid flow, then D is the diameter of the pipe and mu is known as dynamic viscosity in terms of Newton second per meter square. Suppose if the value of Reynolds number calculated less than 2000, then you can say that uh, fluid flow is laminar. If I talk about the fluid flow in turbulent, the Reynolds number must be greater than uh, 4000. Suppose if the RE, Reynolds number is in between uh, 2000 and 4000, it is not, we cannot able to identify what kind of fluid flow is, is it either laminar or turbulent. I hope you understood what is the importance of Reynolds number. By computing the Reynolds number, we can predict the, what type of fluid flow is that, either laminar or turbulent. There are two types of meters available for the measurement of fluids in the gender classification. One is uh, rate meters, another one will be a quantity meter. The rate meter is actually the direct measurement where quantity meters that will be go going for uh, indirect measurement. The rate meters will be classified again like uh, in, uh, infer inferential type and another one is called uh, absolute or positive displacement type. These are the two general classification of uh, fluid measurement methods. Okay, now we are familiar the different type of methods. What are the different type of methods available? As you can able to have a list on different type of fluid measurement techniques. Venturi meter, orifice meter, pitio tubes, electromagnetic flow meter, ultrasonic flow meter, thermal flow meter, wire anemometer. In this video, I am going to concentrate mainly three types of measurement units. That is what is orifice meter, then venturi meter and pitio tube. Let us get understand what do you mean by venturi meter. The main purpose of using venturi meter is to calculate the fluid flow or discharge. It is represented by the letter Q. Venturi meter is going to fix at the pipeline where the discharge takes place. It works based on the principle of Bernoulli's theorem and the equation of continuity. So, according to Bernoulli's theorem, uh, P plus half rho v square plus rho gh that will be constant for any type of fluid. 
it works based on the principle of energy conservation law where p is known as pressure exerted by the fluid v is the velocity and rho is the density of the fluid h is the height okay so this is actually called bernoulli's theorem equation of continuity means consider a conduit okay this is a conduit okay uh, this is a1 and this will be v1 a2 v2 so according to equation of continuity how we can able to write so according to equation of continuity we'll be saying that a1 v1 will be equal to a2 v2 okay that is actually called the equation of continuity where a1 is the area of cross section of this particular inlet v1 is the velocity of fluid flow and uh, this is a2 area of cross section of the another conduit v2 is the velocity of fluid flow okay that is called the equation of continuity venturi meter uses the principle of equation of continuity as well as uh, bernoulli's theorem usually the size of the venturi meter will be like this 3 300 and 150 mm where 300 mm is the diameter of the pipe and 150 mm is the throat diameter okay so it comprises of three segments a short converging part at the middle there is a throat at the end part there is a diverging part i'll show you the particular diagram of venturi meter as i mentioned there is a short converging part you can able to see short converging part then uh, next we can see that there is a throat here you can see the throat then throat diverging part you can see the diverging part here you are going to insert venturi meter at the conduit where you are going to calculate the discharge by using the following formula cd into a1 a2 into square root of 2 gs divided by square root of a1 square minus a2 square so you can able to identify that cd is the coefficient of discharge and here you can able to calculate the height by using uh, density of mercury divided by density of fluid minus 1 into hm mean height okay the height difference differential height okay so this is actually here manometer is enclosed here along with the venturi meter there will be manometer as well okay so you can uh, see uh, rho m means uh, density of mercury or okay rho f means uh, density of fluid and hm is the differential uh, pressure okay differential height not pressure difference in height then you are supposed to substitute here or here in this equation you can able to get discharge is equal to uh, this particular equation cd into a1 a2 square root of 2 gs by square root of a1 square minus a2 square in this way you can able to calculate what is the total discharge that is taking place through this particular pipe or a particular conduit this is a simple method but we need to insert this venturi meter at the particular fluid everywhere it is not applicable suppose where uh, high concentrated acids are flowing in a particular pipe it's highly impossible let us go ahead with the other type of method that is called orifice meter the purpose of orifice meter is to create a pressure drop and uh, a our glass is a form of orifice then orifice comprises of a nozzle then there is a thin sharped edged orifice that is mainly used for limiting or restricting the fluid flow and a calibration is necessary i'll show you the diagram of orifice meter the main purpose of orifice meter that creates a drop a pressure drop see you can see that it creates a pressure drop okay so it uh, by connecting the orifice meter it it uh, produce or it creates a pressure drop then at the minimum here you can see the minimum cross sectional part that is generally called this area that is called vena contracta okay which is having the least diameter area here the fluid flow will be restricted in this particular area an orifice in a pipeline shown in figure with a manometer for measuring the drop of pressure here also you can see the manometer height of the pressure height height difference of the height of the fluid can be measured okay here you can able to see by creating a pressure drop okay uh, when the pressure drop is uh, pressure will be increases pressure will be increases here at the same time velocity will be reduced at this particular point once uh, it is started once the fluid started uh, at after a particular uh, this particular part you can see vena contracta again the pressure reduces and velocity increases you can able to calculate the discharge by using the formula 
okay here this is a formula for calculating the discharge this is the way how to make out by using orifice meter so we have discussed